a little bit about what we know it takes to develop writing skills. And then maybe as a a follow-up to that, are there similar models related to the writing process versus reading? Absolutely. Um, As you know, writing is very complex. Um, I do research on both reading and writing. I would say writing is even more complex and takes longer time to develop than reading. And I don't want to, you know, offend any reading researchers, <laughs> but uh, if, you, if you think about, um, you know, writing um, for yourself, um, I do work with lots of, you know, graduate students in writing. They're, you know, these are really proficient readers, but they still, uh, you know, need a lot of time to develop, you know, writing skills, for example. Not surprisingly, there are several theoretical models that describe you now the writing process and the skills and knowledge that contribute to the process. So I'm going to illustrate this. To illustrate this, I'm going to ask you, Liz, (laughs) and also uh, listeners to engage in a a very quick writing activity. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to invite you to write about what you did during our recent holidays in December or early January. Okay. All so, right. So I'm assuming yeah. that you're writing using your um, dominant hand? Yes. All right. Now I'm going to ask you to pause. Continue writing your less dominant hand. So put your pen to the other hand and continue writing. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> That is not as easy. <laughs> yeah, as I as you do, I want you actually to think about what's happening to your writing, to the process. Okay. Okay. Well, for one thing, it's a uh-huh. lot harder to read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna ask you to do one more. Okay. Now I'm gonna ask you to continue to write in a language you know other than English, but that that lang- in a language that you're not highly proficient okay for me that would be french okay okay can i switch back to my dominant oh yes please yes okay yeah everything really just kind of comes to a halt (laughs) okay (laughs) and i have to i have to think so much more less about my actual thoughts Mm -hmm. and more about the physical writing when I was writing with my left hand for me is my non-dominant hand, how to actually form letters using my non-dominant hand. And then when I was just trying to write in French, I was trying to think about the vocabulary and think about the spelling and, and all focus on, like a cohesive, thoughtful response went mm. out the window. <laughs> exactly. That was, you know, I didn't even prompt you, but you just no. <laughs> right on it. That's exactly what happened. So in the reason why I ask you to engage in this brief exercise is for you to experience just a little bit of, you know, what it feels like to be a five-year-old, six-year-old whose, you know, handwriting or spelling is not very fluent. And, you know, those whose our language is not proficient enough, right? Mm -hmm. So let's think about now, you know, keeping all these things in mind, let's think about the writing process. And then we'll think about the skills and knowledge that we draw on during the writing process. So when I um, gave you the prompt, um, I'm assuming, I believe that the first thing you did was you were uh, thinking about, you know, what you're going to write about, the content of it, right? Yes. This is called... I put a bulleted list of things I did over the holiday. (laughs) So you're planning. That's called idea generation, (laughs) right? So that's one part of the initial part of the writing process. Now, once you have generated ideas and they have to be translated into oral language, and this might not be very... um, 
you might not be uh, think uh, consciously think about it because for adults, you know, this can be automatic a lot of times. But you can you think about it. Same ideas can be expressed using different words, different phrases, different sentences for different audiences, etc. Right. So ideas do have to be translated into a language, and this is called translation process. The next uh, process is um, that tra these translated ideas have to be transcribed into written product, right? Because writing requires written product or output. And this is called transcription process. And then we have to also usually, you know, I didn't ask you to do this, but usually um, adults uh, do evaluate our own writing and revise it. And this is called the revision process. Yes. And all these processes involve, you know, our cognitive resources and social emotional aspects, knowledge and skills from long term memory, and etc. So now there are theoretical models that explain the writing process that I just described. And there's also other sets of um, theoretical models that focus on the skills and knowledge that are involved in the uh, writing process. So just to name a few, uh, some uh, theoretical models that had high influence in the field was the Hayes and Flowers model, cognitive model of writing, or the simple view of writing, or not so simple view of writing. Um, more recently, in an effort to explain Tend these previous models, I propose a model called the direct and indirect effect model of writing, and I call it DUE, 